How bad was sex education in high school? <laughs> it was the worst. That's why we wanted to start this podcast. Dr. Stormy and I knew that there are so many folks out there that want to learn more, that want to start conversations, that want to be vulnerable and express their feelings, emotions, wants, and desires. And that's what Sex 101 is about. Dr. Stormy has spent so much time working with couples, working with men and women. I myself have worked with lots of men talking about relationships and sex and where we're at today with our sexuality. So come join us. This is going to be a great episode, just like all Sex 101 episodes. You're going to learn a lot, you're going to laugh a lot, and we're going to have a great time. All right, Sex 101 podcast is back. I'm excited, Stormy. I'm getting ready to go on tour. And, uh, and you know, it's it's funny because my whole life, everybody's always like, oh, you're a rock star. You probably really, you know, <laughs> man, you're out there. What was what the ladies like? I was like, I just, I was married almost at the beginning. <laughs> And then now, you know, I have a, a, a really strong relationship with my girlfriend and that just, that, that's just not me. That's not, I, I would feel too stupid really doing, it. I mean, the fantasy of it is awesome. You know, the idea totally. of a groupie or somebody. And it's funny cause my, like, I guess I get hit on sometimes, but I don't totally realize it. My girlfriend says, mm. oh you, yeah, no, no, no. This person, you know, like, like she, she'll see comments online. She's like, that person's flirting with you. I was like, no, I don't think so. So I, I never know. I always feel like. <laughs> There's no chance this person is flirting with me. <laughs> oh, uh, that's very endearing. Uh, and it makes me laugh because obviously we always say in one of the original intros for Sex 101 podcast, you're like, even rock stars want to know how to have yeah. better sex. And I like always think about that, you know, it's so true. And it's probably a bit of like, what was that? The memes that were going around social media about like what people think it's like versus what it's really like. Yes. I can imagine grind to the tour too oh 100 it's just sitting in the back alleyway behind a club on you know in your van or bus mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and like mm -hmm. well maybe i'll go eat mcdonald's again or something because that's the only <laughs> thing close you know right exactly uh, anyway uh i am excited talking about sex uh i'm excited about this episode because this is going to be a two-parter folks and and uh today's episode is what do women really want in bed and then our next episode is what do men really want in bed and I'm nervous because stormy you you normally lead it the men when I'm gonna I'm gonna lead a little bit and I'm wondering uh so I just I kind of just uh am copying what you do because you do it so well <laughs> like, oh, you know, oh, they, well I'm very excited to hear and, yeah. from a male point of view the male yeah. gaze what men want in bed it's different than reading it on the research so that would be fun and I look forward to today's episode talking really about what do women, you know, really want in bed. Um, and I think that that this will be a really fun episode. Yeah. Uh, from the men I've worked with and uh, been around and talked to and, and everything I've read, it's funny because men, and I believe women too, but men really do desire wanting to be great lovers for their partner. They want yeah. to, they, I mean, I mean, maybe they, definitely there's some ego there. Like, oh, I'm the greatest lover you've ever had, but uh, sure. <laughs> but they really do want to, I mean, I want to, I want, I want to always be the best lover I can be. Cause that just, yeah, that, that I feel like, oh man, that, that way I don't feel like I'm just receiving or I'm just, you know, like I, I like, I, and men feel that way too. They want to be great lovers. They, cause I mean, they know how good it feels to come or have an orgasm or what, you know, and they want their, their, really? their partner to, to share in that as well. Yeah. And I, you know, I love that. And I think that's one of the, um, sort of the driving factors behind the sex one-on-one podcast is how do we help people be better lovers, right? And the people who are listening to us and following us and all the amazing listener questions we get each week, you know, show us that people want to be better lovers. They want to know we, we, we weren't given good sex education. And so now, but we can, we can learn. I mean, you can definitely teach an old dog new tricks. Let's just yeah. say that. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. Well, let's get not to saying it. That we're, not saying that we're old dogs. No, 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 we are not. We are. Yeah. You know, no, we uh, are we're, not. Yeah. <laughs> uh -uh. No. Yeah, in dog years, we don't, we, we are even that old. Right? <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. So, you know, I think when I think about what women, obviously, being that I am a woman, I was like, well, so what we're going to do today, we're gonna start with like what the research says, because I love the research, right? Um, and and then also going to talk about one of my favorite sex educators, what, what, are, what are her tips? And then I'm going to end it with Dr. Stormy's list. And I have seven things that women really want in bed from their, from their, from their partner. So, all right. Um, that's where we're, that's how we're going to, that's how we're going to roll. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So let's look at the research first. I mean, what's interesting. One of the things that's interesting is the research actually says like, 
right? Which is not going to be a surprise. There is not one recipe. Like, so what one, how you make love to one woman might be very different than the desires of another woman, right? So, you know, the, and again, we say this in every episode, but the key is going to be communication because these are, this is what the research says, which is based on numbers, but what does your woman like? How does your woman want to be made love to? What turns your woman on, right? So if you're a man listening to these episodes, these are some of the questions um, that you want to be thinking about. But let's uh, let's just kind of dive right into research. So the largest study to analyze the diversity of like female sexual pleasure was published in the Journal of Sex and Marital Therapy. It was 1,055 heterosexual women in the U.S. from ranging from ages 18 to 94. And I found some of these very interesting. So more than 36% of women reported needing clitoral stimulation to reach orgasm, right? We've talked about that in many episodes. There's a magic clit episode you can check out for it because it is truly magical and amazing. Um, but you know, it's really, most women need clitoral stimulation to reach climax. Um, penetration alone is not usually sufficient. It's not, it's not a knock on the penis. It's not a knock on men. That's just anatomy. Okay. So this study showed that more than 36% of women need clitoral stimulation to reach orgasm while with less than a fifth showing, saying, reporting that intercourse penetration, uh, penetrative intercourse was sufficient. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Additionally, another 36% said that clitoral stimulation wasn't necessary, but makes it better. Okay. So yeah. basically go, go watch the episode of clitoris because <laughs> it's <laughs> the only organ made with the sole purpose of pleasure. Um, and it's amazing. Okay. So that's what the research sort of reflected there. Um, and then we've talked about in, in other episodes about the different kinds of orgasm that women and female body uh, people can have. And the majority of women say that some orgasms feel better than others. And 10% of them said they're all the same. Okay. I can say for myself, I think they're very different. I definitely encourage you to go listen to our episodes on the different types of orgasms and explore and play there. And if you're one, if you're a man listening, you want to work on this with your partner, be willing to explore different kinds of orgasms, different kinds of touch, different kinds of toys that can stimulate different areas because there are so many different orgasms available to female body people. Yeah. And you don't, and oftentimes neither person knows which one is going to feel a work or do, do it that day. Like, like oftentimes ladies don't know what, you know, they, they, maybe they had, they haven't had enough experience or understanding yeah. or, or, you know, to even know. So you might as well branch right. out and see what you can do. Exactly. Then. And vulva body people like might not even know what feels good to them to your point, like, because there's not a lot of, right. We, we, and we have episodes on that. Like, how are, how are you with your self pleasure? Because it really is this beautiful invitation to know your own pleasure map and then to share it with your partner. Um, and many of us, especially with self-pleasure tend to go right for what we know works also with intercourse. And this is an invitation to not do that, to like expand and explore around that. Yeah. 100%. So, I, I, I was even going to say this real quick. Um, even in my own sexual experience, I realized oftentimes uh, there have been times where my partner did not know uh, about their own orgasm or their own self pleasure yeah. or didn't really self pleasure that much or, right. or whatever, you know. And so I I took that on me. It's like, oh man, I must be a bad lover. You don't mm -hmm. have to think that. That doesn't mean you're a bad lover. What it means is you're getting ready to go on an adventure, and it can be really fun if you both are in, <laughs> into it. Like figure totally. out what, what what works and what doesn't, because oftentimes, I mean, we say this how much how often do we say it? biggest sex organ is your brain, and yep. your brain can keep you from orgasming. It doesn't matter if you have the the best penis and vagina or best body, the most abs, uh, unbelievable. You know, it, your mm -hmm. mind, wherever you're at mentally, can is totally affects how, if you're going to orgasm or not. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's it's like your biggest sex organ and your biggest barrier to great sex, our mind, you know? Yep. So, so yeah, I mean, in, in the study, two thirds of uh, women in the study preferred direct st clitoral stimulation. Um, and then uh, they actually got even more nuance about the kind of uh, stimulation. So um, most of the women, they, the, the kind they enjoyed was a repeated rhythmic motion. That was what most women reported as was ideal. A repeated, a repeated rhythmic motion. Um, and then 5% of women preferred to have their clitoris avoided altogether. So again, this shows you the variety of what women really want in bed, yeah. right? But the invitation and the exciting part, like you said, is like, think of it as an adventure to explore with your partner. Uh, and, and if you're a woman out there listening, explore yourself, explore your own body and your own pleasure to find out what really turns you on. So yeah. I, I thought, I love the research and what it shows, but for me, it really showed the variety right of, of responses 
Um, yeah. And and let's say so something else that most women agree now is light to medium pressure on the genitals is best. Only one in ten women said they prefer firm pressure during stimulation. But again, your woman might be different. So find out, ask her, listen to feedback, listen to her cues. Um, so basically there's no one size fits all. Like, sorry, there's not like a list of what women really yeah. want in bed, but that's also this invitation to make it curious and playful and explorative and connecting and intimate to go out there and have this adventure together in, in learning how to have better sex. Yeah, you're right. I, it, uh, in my own personal experience, it it's funny because... I always, I never want to go too far or do anything too fast or potentially cause any pain or anything like that. Right. But some partners, you're right, like wanted super light touch and that's what they mm -hmm. enjoyed. Other partners are like, can you go a little harder? It's like, wait, hold on. Yeah. Are you sure? And they're like, no, 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 no <laughs> trust me. I'm, and, and that honestly, that is so awesome when somebody goes, no, trust me, I'm, I will let you know if this isn't working like that is such a relief and such a good thing like hey i'm going mm. to let you know if this isn't working so try that's some amazing. things you know? <laughs> that, yeah that's, that's exactly nice. right yeah. yeah yeah absolutely i love that and then also outside of like direct sexual technique more than half the women in the study said that spending time to build arousal okay this is what this is going to be on one of dr stormy's tips but spending time uh, many women many female brains need time to simmer so building that arousal, right? Having a partner who, and these were some other things to report, having a partner who knows what they like, having a partner who promotes emotional intimacy, all reportedly contributed to better orgasms. Okay. So either, all, what I always say about what happens outside the bedroom shows up in the bedroom, what happens in the bedroom shows up outside the bedroom, right? We don't, it's not just fabulous sex in the bedroom and then nothing else contributes to that yeah. um, or lack of fabulous sex. Right. So how's your intimacy? How do you, how, how can you help your woman simmer? Right. Sim like the foreplay aspect. Okay. Um, and then these were just some other statistics. 62% said that they cuddling more often would lead make for better sex. 49.3% said kissing during sex, uh, saying romantic, sweet, romantic things. So whispering sweet, nothings in the middle of sex uh, was 46.6%. So that would make sex better. And then giving or receiving a massage before sex was 45.9% of participants. And we've done episodes on sexy massage uh, and things like that. But again, to me, this is all about the things that are broader than sex that make for better sex. Yeah. I love that language too. Simmering. That's, a, that's a really good visual, like, you know, a pot on the, the stove and it's like, you know, okay, it's more simmering right there, but you could turn it up. Or you can turn it down like that. That, yeah, that, totally. that makes a lot of sense to me. Like, hey, where are you at? And yeah. what, are you just leaving a, a, the pot full of water cold, or is it you? Do you where, what are you wanting to happen right now? And <laughs> right, what, exactly. You know, yeah. Right, and, and what, the pot yeah. doesn't go from ice cold water to boiling water in right. instantaneous. Right, like, and, uh, and that's so actually true. Ian Kerner who says that that women, the female brain needs to simmer, and I, I love his work as well. And so. Um, yeah, I think it's, and as a woman, I can say for me, very much it's true, right? Yeah. Um, and so actually Emily, Emily Nagoski is another author and sex educator that I really like. Um, and these are her five things that women want in bed. So she says pleasure. Number one is pleasure in the right context. So which means low Ooh, stress yeah. and high affection. So pleasure in the right context. And she gives the example in this article I read where she's saying, like, let's say your lover, it's like, take, it's like sweet, and romantic, and it's low stress and high affection, which is the context. Um, and you, they're tickling you and you're laughing and all of a sudden leads to fooling around and, and sex, right? Like that's a, that's pleasure. But if you're, if you're annoyed or frustrated or in conflict with your partner and they come up and tickle you hard, they want to pull the knife off in the right context. Yeah. Um, awesome. All right. Let's keep moving. Okay. Number two, which is, I think a good one for, for the men out there is it's, a woman wants you to be a, a hero. These are Emily Nagoski's tips, but I really agree with. So that means a woman, no matter how fiery and independent she is, she wants, there's a part of her that wants to be taken care of and protected. So she's able to let go. So she's able to trust. When she is able to trust, she's able to surrender. And that leads to better sex. Yeah, that, that makes total sense. And number three. Yeah, totally. Right. Like, I mean, and I am fiery as independent as they come. And yet I, and I don't need a man to take care of me or to protect me. I want that. And not every woman does, but these are some broad strokes assumptions for sure. Yeah. Okay. And that leads to number three for her, from her, which is for women to, women want to be seen and understood and courted. 
mm-hmm. right? And seen and understood and courted. So these are some uh, non-sexual things that will lead to better sex, according to Emily Nagoski and her studies out there. And number four is confidence in your own body, in your own pleasure, right? So it is really a turn on if my partner is feeling confident in his own body and his own pleasure. If he doesn't expect me to be the source, sole source of his pleasure, and I don't expect him to be the sole source of my pleasure. So that's a bit, that's the confidence piece. And then the fifth one from her is joy. Like, right. It's like, we've talked about this so many times, Toby, like joyful, laughter, playfulness, um, really make for better sex. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, if you're not, if you, if it's too tense or too serious, like sometimes you want to have just passionate, oh my gosh, we are connected in a way. And this is, we are two sexual beings that are making something amazing right now. Uh, But most of the time you need to be able to, wait, let me laugh at myself for a minute. Hold on. What was that? You know what I mean? Like, uh, 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 oh. Uh, you know, oh, uh, wrong, wrong hole, or uh, what, was, what was that noise? Or you know, I mean, you if know, you can, if don't you know can, where that came from. Right. Yeah, yeah. If you can laugh in that moment, I promise you, almost, I'd say ninety nine percent of the time, your partner's gonna laugh too, and then you're gonna hug and kiss, and you're gonna, it's even gonna be more fun. Like, yeah, the, totally. the, like if you take, if so you think, true. if you think you're trying to do work, it's not going to work. You know, what I mean, like, right. th- like you yeah. are, it's, you're not there to just pound and lick and kiss and touch that, that there has to be more than that. And, and when we get to the men's, uh, episode next, um, there really is, I mean, men really desire an emotional connection. Of course, women do too. Humans right, totally. require Human. emotional connection. That That's right. one of the most human things you can have. That's why babies right. can smile at you and they, you know, they don't know yeah. anything, but they know, Oh my gosh, this I'm happy. You know, th- right. this makes me happy because I'm being touched by my mom, my mother and, you know, right. held and, you know, all those things. So we're Very literally important. wired. We're wired for connection, you know, and what yeah. a beautiful expression of connection sex can be. Yeah. Right? And and there's like you said, I love that. You, there's different kinds of sex. Like sometimes there's just like I want to rip your clothes off, have a quickie sex. Right. And then there's I want to be deeply connected and feel seen and heard and understood sex. And you get to explore all those different kinds of sex. And yeah. here's the thing. I, obviously, I have a passion for helping you know, couples in long-term committed relationships have fabulous sex and keep the passion alive. And one of the things is as if you're doing these things, it never gets dull. It's like making love to a new person because I'm not the same woman I was several years ago. So, right. I'm, I'm a, hopefully an evolution always. And so, um, and I think it was Esther Perel said that she's been like five, she was like five women in her marriage, you know, like five different women, yeah. like because of her own growth. And if you have this desire to explore and exp- express different kinds of sexuality with your partner, it will never get old. Yeah, you're right. It won't get old. You're exactly right. It won't get old. It, it will always it stay can get better. I, I think yeah. it gets better. So, yeah, <laughs> so you're right. Which leads me to Dr. Stormy's list of what women want in bed. <laughs> <laughs> So this one was easy. I just wrote this from my mind. So this is just my perspective. So take it or leave it. If it works for you, take it. If it doesn't, leave it behind. Um, but foreplay for me, and I think for a lot of women, certainly a lot of my clients and, and friends, is that foreplay is a 24-hour activity, right? Women need to simmer. This is back to that, right? So yep. how can you be in seduction? How can you create foreplay, uh, both you and your partner, um, together? Yeah. Okay. Number two, what women really want in bed is your presence. So the more present you are, and by the way, women are amazing at feeling your presence or lack thereof. Okay. But the more present you are, the more she trusts you, the more she surrenders, the better sex that you, she has, and you have. Um, so being present and that's a practice. It is not easy to always be present. I certainly am not always present myself, but I, I am committed to the practice of it. I think you're right. That is, I'm, and you know what? I feel like that's even deeper. Like it is hard to practice being present even in every aspect of our life. So if mm-hmm. you're allowing yourself to not be present during sex, then it, it really does become maybe just a fi- a physical interaction or something totally. like that. Like, like if you are committed to working to, hey, I'm going to stay here. I am here. The, the phones are away. The TV's off. I just want you to know that I love you. If you can start with just, or or I'm just committed to you right now. It doesn't even have to be in love necessarily. But what it is, is I am committed to being here with you right now and us sharing this moment. It really does make a difference. I, I totally. have learned that. And I didn't realize it about myself that I could be somewhere else while I was having sex. Like I can be somewhere oh, yeah. else. And that, totally. and that I was like, so oh, well of said. course this sex isn't going to be that great. 
It no. can't be. I'm not here. <laughs> no, exactly. Here. Like, I don't know. I don't know who <laughs> no. is. <laughs> who who's here right now? Nobody. I don't even know. Right. You know, and, like really. And we yeah. exact. And I love that you just normalized that and brought that into the conversation because we've all been there. We've all done it. Like, and, you know, and you can, and maybe you can think back with, and do it with curiosity rather than like self criticality or judgment. It's it's like you're masturbating into each other, which is like, okay, yeah. that's a different kind of thing. But then being fully present with each other, there is very much a difference. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was like probably my biggest one. Um, and then, you know, the next one, which we've talked about in other episodes is ask her what she wants. Follow her lead. Listen to her cues. Listen to her, how she's moving her hips and her breath rate. You know, how deep is her breathing? How fast is her breathing? Verbal and nonverbal cues, following feedback, because we like we talked about this isn't a recipe. There is no one size fits all and that you don't want to be in performance. So when you are listening and following each other's cues, there's adaptability, there's flexibility, there's reciprocity. So that's a really big one. And that takes practice, but that also takes presence, right? You can't yeah. be aware of someone's cues and how their energy is shifting if you're not present. Yep. 100%. And and it is hard. Like you said, I'm really glad you said it's a practice. Like you had to practice it the same way as I had to practice guitar or singing or, totally. you know, anything, math, whatever it is. Yeah. Like you don't, you don't get better <laughs> at that. And it's, and everything tries to steal our attention today. That's what the whole totally. world almost feels like it's based on. And so to give somebody your attention is one of the most valuable things because it's totally constantly it's tried to be taken from you. Yeah. Yeah, it really. And is. you know, and think about a time where you felt like the sole focus of your partner's attention, intention, you know, um, their full concentration on you. It's like amazing. Mm-hmm. It feels so good. And we don't do it very often. We don't gift it to our partners or ourselves very often. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. And yeah, you're right. Like, I mean, the the best sex I've ever had in my life was always when. I was present and I was like, oh, we're just here together enjoying each other. And that's all we need right now. And that, Absolutely. and then that, that's just amazing. It's just a great feeling. Absolutely. <laughs> that's awesome. All right. There's the last two, which kind of are tied in is sex toys. All a big fan. We've done episodes on those sex toys as team players. They are not going to replace your penis. They are not pre- preferable to your penis, but sex toys as team players. Um, which brings me to like the last one, which is learning the anatomy, like learning your anatomy together. Yeah. Like not don't go just what for what you know works. Like we have this beautiful anatomy genital gen, genitalia um, that has all these nerve endings and different places to play and explore. And so, um, you know, be committed to being a great lover. And I, I really know, well, I know that people listening and following our podcast are so applaud yourself and stay committed to being a great lover and learning about the anatomy, different anatomy and what, what can be, and sex toys can be a really great way to explore that. Yeah. I mean, I sell sex toys. So, <laughs> but the thing, <laughs> the thing with marriage supplies, I, I definitely, it, the number one thing I've learned is that like, I think it maybe even in the beginning when we started marriage supply, I thought, Oh, this is just going to enhance and make sex so much better. Now I realize it is a component of sex that can be added Sometimes, my, I mean, if, if you want it all the time, you can have it all the time. But I think it's it's more of a, oh, wait, we bought this together and it's fun and frisky and we're going to try this. And whoa, look look at that thing. What does that do? Where's the, let's get some batteries. And, let, you know, it, it should still be the same thing. Like you're doing this together and it's something that you want to totally. use together that adds to the moment. You know what I mean? The, the, the same way as I love football, Absolutely. but I definitely want some nachos and wings and other, you know, the, the side that like football is amazing. Let me sit down. I know. Gosh, this is the yeah, most, exactly. man, this is the most man example any human has ever done. <laughs> it's just like football, ladies. <laughs> you want your nachos. You want your, you want your, do you, want say, do you want to save this for the next oh. episode? <laughs> yeah. 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 I, knew, I better say, hold on. Let me, yeah. Let me. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> all right sorry yeah yeah keep going keep no going. <laughs> i love that and I, I agree right like and it's something that and sex toys can be and we've done episodes on that how, something to pick out together something to be playful and erotic together um and then that leads me to the last one which no one who follows the sex 101 podcast is going to be surprised by you or i saying this toby but communication it right. is the hottest thing out there it will be the absolute key ingredient to fabulous sex Yep. It always is. It always is. It always is. I mean, we say it, the, the two things we say is lube, lube, lube and communicate communication, <laughs> communication, communication is it's, it always works. 
It always it is does. helpful. I mean, you will feel better in, in so many ways if you communicate how you're feeling, what you're feeling, what your desires are for sure. Yep. Awesome. This is good. So there's a little bit to chew on about what women really want in bed. Well, yeah, there's a lot right. to chew on. What, 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 when and by the way, this is how magically beautiful. And I think the feminine is so complicated in the most amazing way. And I hope my man never figures me out. Like that's part of what is like the allure of the feminine. I don't mean that yeah. like in a gamey way. Yeah. But, you know, it, it is beautiful. And you're and if you are a man making love to a woman or a woman making love to a woman like that, part of that complication is the most beautiful thing about it. Yeah. You're 100 percent right. All right, ladies. She, you know, Dr. Stormy gave you a lot of information there. <laughs> Men, too. Uh, so definitely do your own research, figure out some things. But definitely people want things in bed. And like she said, communication, figuring those things out and will make uh, sex and love and our daily lives so much better. All right, let's get to Stump Stormy. It's time to... Stump Stormy. All right, see if you know this one. Uh, the, okay, so in 26 states, there's something sexual that is grounds for divorce. 26 states in America. It's something revolving in you know around the realm of sex that is grounds for divorce. Hmm. Well, I don't know if this is right. So, but what just popped up is like, I know sex toys are like illegal in a lot of states. Yeah. So I don't know. That's what just popped up. Okay. No, pu so, no pun, in, no pun intended. <laughs> not sex toys. Impotence. No, come on. Impotence. It's grounds for divorce in 26. I never would have had file that. for divorce if like your man has erectile dysfunction. Wow. Which, which is oh, pretty, I, I actually which is feel tender common. about that. I do. Yeah. I actually do too. Like, I mean, that's pretty common. Mm -hmm. And it's not, you know, that I, that, that is something, I mean, we'll talk about in the next episode too, but just the, that idea of like, oh no, I can't. I want like mm -hmm. most men that mm -hmm. struggle with that. And a lot of times it's just in your mind. I mean, I promise you there have been times where. Totally. Uh, it's I mean, common. You, just even <laughs> me, like where I was like, wait a minute. I'm too overwhelmed or I I'm, I don't know what to do yeah, or, you know, and then totally. and you're totally, once again, I'm in my head and I'm not present. And so, right. you know, it, it's really hard right. to have a, a physical reaction yeah. or erection or whatever, you know, it really right. Is. And I feel that so tenderly. So I guess what I want to just say about that is like, if there's any, anyone out there struggling with that, like, please feel free to reach out to me, like on my website, lovedeeperlab.com. There's a mm -hmm. complimentary discovery call, 30 minute call with me. Like this is one of my, favorite subjects to help support men with um yeah. and to feel like that's we call it sexual mastery and sexual power but just know that there's 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 support for you out there yeah definitely 100 percent. all right uh let's get to listener questions have a question we've got answers here's this week's listener question all right. First question. I would love it if my wife sent more photos, videos, and sexts to me. Sex is kind of a hard word to say for sure. Um, sorry <laughs> if you can hear my dog barking. Somebody might be at the front door. Um, I have tried to send some spicy content, but it's never reciprocated. What can we do? Mm, and this, so comes I love from, this, this comes from message me. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I love that you named it that because um, what comes up for me there is like, but you're, at, you're, you're desiring reciprocity, right? You're desiring your wife to, well, I probably, it sounds like initiation and reciprocity is what you're desiring. So I would say again, to come back to communication, you sending it, you would think your wife might get the impression, like understand that you want it in return, but I would be more direct and really share with her. Not by the way, not in a moment where you're like longing for it, not get and not receiving it. Yeah. Um, but in a moment of connection to say like, Hey, like, babe, this, I find this so sexy and I would love it if you would X, Y, or Z, uh, and be very specific. And then the, even go for, further because when you do that, I feel this, right. I feel turned on, or I feel like I'm the best partner in the world or whatever it is for you. Um, and then if she's let her respond, just be in curiosity, active listening. Yeah. Um, and if she's hesitant, then you get to get curious about why is she hesitant? Because she might have a really good reason. Like I want to run for office and I don't want to 
topless picture out there or whatever. I mean, you have right. no idea. Right. No, so no, it no, gives right. you right. And right. There is a lot of safety stuff of like people can act like dickheads when you break up. And sometimes oh. people don't want stuff out there, you know? Right. Yeah. So it's just that really that conversation and literally is sharing with her what like, because it's also lovely. Even if she's like, I don't feel comfortable with that. It's like lovely to hear. Like, you know what I would find really hot is a sexy text from you. Right. Yeah. A sexy text is really nice. And, it, but I think too, sometimes you're embarrassed to ask, or you, you know, that the, there is a stigma there that like, what are you a sex fan? Or, you know, I've, I've had people make me feel shame for wanting right. to be sexy. And I was like, but mm -hmm. that it's not bad. I, I'm not uh, trying to be sexy. No. Like, like, you know, I mean, it, being sexy and being a man, there is a different connotation with that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like even, yeah. even from your friends or, you know, your lovers or whatever. So. Um, it's okay to ask once again, communication. It is. Um, yeah. all right. Uh, next question. My girlfriend and I have been dating for two months. We have amazing sex. My question is, how do you know when you're in love? I'm worried our sex is so great that it might be clouding my judgment. She's really sweet and amazing as well, but the sex is the best I have ever had. And so it's hard not to feel a strong connection. And this comes from, mm. I did it all for the nookie. Yeah. The nookie. <laughs> I know you were a big Little uh, Biscuit fan. You were. A uh, huge, you were. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. That was good. Uh, so the first thing I want to say is yay for great sex. Like, yeah. I'm so excited for this listener. Like, yay for great sex. Like, OK, so that's the first thing I want to say. Um, and yeah, there can be this total, especially in the first couple months, there's this like oxytocin overload and all these other yummy love hormones feel good hormones and even more so if the sex is great, right? We, yeah. Sex, not all great, right? There's great sex. There's okay sex. I mean, someone said, I think it's Cameron Diaz who says it's that, you know, all sex is good sex or someone, something like that, but it's, it, there's varying degrees of great sex. So I'm so glad you're having great sex. That's amazing. Um, but just know that there's this like oxytocin overload, feel good hormones. It's part of it. There's this, you know, honeymoon phase, especially in the beginning, but your question of how do you know if you're in love, for me, that's like a, a very esoteric question because I think we do throw around, I love you, like it's like a, you know, goodbye, you know, like a hello or a goodbye. Um, I think that. Um, so yeah. what does it mean to you? Like what that's I'm putting this back on the listener. What is the what does love mean to you? So for me, um, what I when I'm working with couples that are out there dating or, you know, single is like, what is, what's the long-term potential with this partner? Do you guys have shared values? Are you at a similar place in your worldview? Also in your life transitions, like meaning like she wants kids and you don't like, that's a big one, you know? Huge. Um, so looking at some of those things. And so looking at, looking at what else is it that draws you to this person beyond great sex? Um, and I think that's where you just kind of sit with, right? It's new. It's exciting. It's so fabulous. I'm so happy you're having great sex. And these are just things to kind of sit with. And then I also think, think there's a little bit of a nuanced thing. I really always recommend for the clients I'm working with who are single and out there dating is how do you feel before you see the person? How, what's your energy like during your time with the person and after you leave the person? Because yeah. It's got this, like, I need more, more, more. That's something to pay attention to, not good or bad. Or if it's like, wow, I just feel so good after spending time with this person. So those have yeah. a different flavor to them. So those are just some tips that I have. Yep, 100%. Um, and, and you know, yeah, like like you were saying, I mean, the, the some of the things are just figuring out your own emotions and what do you feel outside of when you have sex? Like, you know, don't, yeah. you know, see what that that is like, so... So just All enjoy right. it and think with both heads and yes. your heart. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Uh, but enjoy that sex. Enjoy yeah, it. Absolutely. <laughs> it sounds like it's pretty good, so enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, all right. Email us your listener questions, please. We love these listener questions, and we love topics that you folks send in. Um, we sure would appreciate it. Um, you can email Stormy at stormy at lovedeeplab.com. You can email me, Toby, at marriagesupply.com. You can get 10% off at marriagesupply.com with code SEX101. And uh, follow Dr. Stormy on Instagram at docstormy, the number one, or TikTok, touchy subjects with three S's. Thank you guys for listening. We couldn't be here without you. Remember, knowledge is power. Sex is power. The world needs more of both.